Hi, I'm Eric Schumacher Rasmussen. I'm the editor and VP of Streaming Media, and we're here with another executive interview. And today I'll be speaking with Ali Hojat, who is the VP of Marketing for Expressplay, Intertrust's Expressplay, I should say, right? <laughs> that's correct. Hi, Eric. Thanks Hi, for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And that's one of the things we'll be talking about. You've really made um, a push in the last month or so to emphasize the Expressplay brand. But let's back up and start about how start talking about the fact that Intertrust has obviously been around for a very long time, and it's had a couple of different phases and focus areas over the years. Can you talk about uh, where your focus is today and also give us a brief overview of the whole company's history? Sure, of course. So Intertrust started in 1990 and for over 30 years actually has been a global technology company with focus on security, privacy, and rights management services. Today, we have two independent uh, businesses. One is called Intertrust Expressplay, and the sec second one is called Intertrust Platform. So Intertrust Expressplay is really focused on content protection and anti-piracy for media and entertainment, and is, is a wholly owned subsidiary of Intertrust, and is pushing out all the product and services under the Expressplay brand. And then uh, the Intertrust Platform is actually uh, focused on secure data platforms and trusted data-driven services, which is really focused on other verticals besides m and &E, and like it's looking into verticals like utility, um, energy, healthcare, IoT, and so on. Uh, we have really independent uh, websites. So the media security group website is expressplay.com and uh, the Intertrust platform website is intertrust.com. Perfect. So obviously for our audience, the media and entertainment subsidiary is the one that's of most interest. So tell us more about the Express Place subsidiary and how its products and services are structured. Sounds good. So Express Play subsidiary really uh, offers what we call the Express Play Media Security Suite. It's really a SaaS uh, platform uh, which is designed to offer a robust content protection anti-piracy, optimized really for content owners, and also the distributors of any type of content, whether it's VOD or live. And uh, it includes a leading multi-DRM cloud service, which again has been used by some of the largest streaming platforms globally. It includes a broadcast TV security solution based on an open standard DRM called Marlin, which is actually embedded on almost every smart TV. And also we offer uh, forensic watermarking and content monitoring services. And these are again used for both live and on-demand services. And lastly, we also have a offline DRM solution for offline environment. And this is really to do secure uh, download or offline playback when there is no full connectivity really targeted for you know, in-flight entertainment or transportation and other travel applications. Okay, so it really is a very comprehensive approach to security and rights management. How does Intertrust Express Play uh, perform geographically? And can you share who some of your key customers are, what types of key customers you have? Absolutely. So uh, we have a variety of customers, which are in the different profiles, uh, like content owners, as I mentioned, uh, pay TV operators, streaming service, uh, ser uh, service providers, and some of, some of the device manufacturers or our customers. Uh, geogra geographically, like this is a global, uh, again, footprint, but our strongest geographies is really uh, China, India, and Western Europe throughout the last 10, 15 years. Uh, but we also gaining att attraction in US and also in uh, other parts of Europe and APAC. So if I wanna mention some of the uh, flagship customers in China, obviously we have had protection of Tencent and Aichi service platforms for many, many years. Uh, in India, basically Sony Leave and Hotstar are among the top uh, streaming service pro providers which are using Expressplay DRM uh, for protecting all the live and premium content they have. Uh, in US, uh, we have actually been helping Vimeo and AIP Network through our partnership with Fastly that they're using again Expressplay DRM. Uh, again, in Europe recently, we announced Cellnext in um, Spain. Uh, we had Sky New Zealand OTT platform, which is using Expressplay DRM in one of the new ones recently announced. And uh, also in UK, uh, UView has been a main reference and adopter of Expressplay using Marlin DRM for many, many years. 
in terms of broadcast security, last year we deployed uh, with HD Plus in Germany. So that's the reference for our cloud-based broadcast security solution for direct-to-TV uh, delivery. And in terms of like in-flight entertainment and off-flight DRM, uh, Panasonic Avionics has always been uh, one of the main references for our offline DRM solution. Also recently, one of the Z subsidiary, which is uh, Margo Networks or Sugarbox, has been using again Expressway DRM offline for their in-transit content services. Those are some huge names. Uh, congratulations. Yep. <laughs> um, Thank you. As you look to the future, uh, what are the important trends and market opportunities that InterTrust Express Play is seeing now and how are you going to pursue them? So there are really two main themes that we are going after. One of them is really focused on the streaming. And the reason is uh, as we see more and more growth in OTT streaming, there is a greater threat to a great threat of piracy to the industry. And so there is, I, I personally think the main reason for that is Today, the rights to most premium content is really a split across many different viewing platforms. And subscribers really have to have no choice but really subscribe to multiple services and they have to pay a lot for that. And this is really becoming even more critical when you look at sports and live sports because in many cases, uh, subscribers are priced out of their favorite sports content because just having all the subscriptions together is just too much. So this is actually giving opportunities for professional pirate services to attract new subscribers by offering a lower cost service. And obviously, you know, pirates are not paying for content so they can offer a lower price. So this is actually a big problem for industry that we are hoping to help by offering our services to help industry to fight piracy and at the same time, help the service uh, streaming service providers to kind of uh, have the content protection and anti-piracy techniques as part of their whole end-to-end -end, uh, services protection strategy. Uh, the next team is really focused on how the pay TV market is looking to go direct to TV. You know, today when a subscriber actually buys a TV from the store or comes home, they plug it in and they see all these different streaming apps coming with the TV. And they really don't care if the content comes from the streaming app or from a broadcast uh, channel. So uh, why shouldn't be able that shouldn't be the case that the pay TV operators are actually providing a broadcast service using an operator app directly to the TV. And today, smart TVs in terms of security are really like a high end setup box. They have all the features needed. And our contribution is we are hoping we can provide a cloud based unified security solution that can enable both streaming as well as uh, broadcast TV direct to the smart TV. Uh, for the consumer. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, DRM has become something of a commodity. So how does InterTrust Express Play differentiate itself from others on the market? Well, uh, good question. And uh, I'm gonna explain some of the key differentiators which I have seen our customers actually use. So one of them is really related to scalability of the platform, how we can instantly scale, uh, scale the number of uh, users to meet the peak demand. I mentioned Hotstar as one of our customers. Uh, in some of their high profile game, they had about 25 million concurrent user watching a, a sporting event at the same time. So you, you can imagine like all these 25 million subscribers need to retrieve a DRM license for that game at the same time. So being able to meet that uh, scale uh, is really important. And that's one of the features or key differentiators that our platform can support and has been providing that you know, uh, experience to our customers over and over. Uh, the second differentiation is really related about the sensitivity to latency. So again, it's important for live sports or any live content, but uh, being able to provide a live optimized, uh, low latency license delivery mechanism using proxy license uh, delivery method is in important. And some of our customers are using that today uh, in order to manage uh, really live events uh, in the low latency fashion. And then lastly, I think, uh, again, uh, having a streamlined content packaging workflow is important. And we have been following standards like CPIX and SPEAK to kind of uh, have integration done with all the encoders and packages. Uh, so that's, again, another thing that uh, we are uh, trying to differentiate ourselves in the market. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we actually made an announcement about supporting Speak 2.0 version, 
And uh, that's really, again, uh, helping the industry to move into a unified, uh, you know, integration with uh, encoder and packages. Can you talk a little, little bit more about how InterTrust Express Play is involved with the CPICS and SPEAK standards? Uh, yeah, so yeah, actually the history of SPEAK and, uh, speak and CPICS is interesting. You know, in the old days, uh, there were no standards and obviously every multi DRM platform had their own custom APIs and custom integrations with encoder and packages. So Dash IF started to actually solve this problem by introducing CPIX. So CPIX actually means uh, Content Protection Information Exchange Format. And uh, it was really a true industry innovation when they started it, but what it lacked was really the API specification for integration. And also it was only limited to Dash at the beginning. So what happened is basically AWS started to look into uh, introducing Speak which really started by matching CPIX 2.0, but uh, they defined an API interface, which was used for integration between all the multi-DRM vendors and packages. Almost all of the multi-DRM service providers really implemented SPEAK after that moment. Uh, but then uh, Dash IF actually added support for HLS and Microsoft Smooth Streaming in CPIX 2.3. And that was where the industry was really looking for a unified approach to converge these two together. So we were working with AWS the last two years and AWS, uh, by, with their partnership with uh, Dash IF, they actually created Speak 2.0, which uh, first of all matches CPIX 2.3, so the latest version of CPIX, and at the same time, uh, obviously supports uh, kind of a low latency streaming with a unified file format for both HLS and Dash. And one of the key benefits is really uh, the fact that uh, it supports multiple encryption keys and that enables separate keys for audio or video tracks, which was again, a limitation in the previous version, as well as also, you know, separate encryption keys for different video tracks based on the resolution, frame rate, HDR characteristics, and so on. So uh, we, again, we're working as a better partner with AWS uh, the last year or so to make sure speak to that all can work with our multi DRM platform. Uh, we were one of the first vendors who actually announced the integration. And uh, now, I mean, these key benefits can be used by our customers who have been asking and using the speak and CPIX platform. Terrific. Uh, analytics is another area that's getting increased attention. Uh, how does, uh, InterTrust Express Play help your customers achieve a great quality of experience through some of the tools that you offer with your DRM? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, analytics is very important. And one of the features of Express Play DRM is to offer a real time DRM analytics dashboard. And it's really about a platform or a dashboard that can show different metrics uh, related to the health of the uh, multi DRM service. Uh, and this is important for all the streaming service providers in their video uh, workflow to either use the bash dashboard or they can also use the APIs to retrieve information directly from the platform. So there's really two use cases. Uh, one is for diagnostic purposes, as you mentioned. So when there, imagine there is a playback issue, right? Uh, the service provider needs to know if this was related to the DRM platform, was there a issue or error related to DRM license delivery? or for what type of DRM or how many of those errors are happening. So this is one of the metrics that they're gonna look into in order to diagnostic the, uh, uh, again, the, uh, from the dashboard that we offer. And then the second use case is really for the uh, streaming providers operations team to really look into, again, how many DRM licenses are provided or retrieved and requested for each of the DRM types or for which type of devices that are requesting this and even what is the latency associated with that. So we talked about low latency and we talked about, again, live events. You can, again, monitor the latency for each type of a device and each type of the, uh, again, uh, DRM uh, through the dashboard that we offer. Okay, what about new markets? You talked earlier about the trends that you've focused on up until this point, but what about new target markets and new areas that Express Play is focusing on? So, uh, Good question. And uh, obviously we are still focusing a lot on sports that has been a major driver and it's still growing. There's more and more on sports, live sports streaming and that actually also enabling more and more uh, you know, piracy threat. 
So we are again, very much involved in uh, that target market specifically. We recently, we, we, very soon, we're gonna have a report coming up in the next week or so uh, in partnership with the Sports Pro Media, which is really looking into the scale of piracy, piracy in sports, uh, what are the techniques used today by service operators, and some of the case studies that, you know, like leagues such as English Premier League or La Liga have actually benefited from these type of anti-piracy or content protection services. So this is really interesting. But besides sports, uh, there's a couple of other directions that we are looking at or target markets that we are uh, getting involved with. One is about esports, and obviously esports is growing more and more. And, um, you know, of, even though some of the esports services or contents are uh, delivered freely on YouTube and Twitch, but pirates are still looking for additional ad revenue by restreaming those content. So you're again working with game studios and uh, esports uh, content uh, provi service providers to help them on you know how they can leverage maybe DRM to do a subscription-based price uh, offering for their premium event, and at the same time leverage some of the anti-piracy techniques that the sports providers have been using in order to reduce the threat of piracy to their systems. And then lastly, we're also looking into e-learning. E-learning, obviously, again, another uh, target market which is growing. Uh, video streaming is becoming a method of e-learning landscape. More and more, you know, stu students and employees are using um, uh, videos or, uh, you know, e-learning videos. So uh, there is um, a threat of piracy coming to that market, and that's a new phenomenon. And so again, we published a report recently that is looking into what are the security threats into the e-learning type of services and how, again, the content protection and anti-piracy services can be uh, adding value to protect uh, or to actually uh, help uh, protect the uh, return on their investment for uh, the e-learning platforms. Yeah, I mean, that's a market that up until well, about 18 months ago, coincidentally, uh, we would have thought uh, that there wasn't much need for, for content protection and security with educational and e-learning videos. But clearly that's, uh, that's changed along with so much else. Now, earlier in the conversation, you mentioned Marlin and Intertrust was, of course, one of the early uh, pioneers with Marlin. It was one of the five co-founders of the Open Standard Marlin DRM. But with Express Play, it seems like you've taken it beyond the traditional OTT and IPTV markets to launch support for direct-to-TV broadcasting. Can you wrap things up for us by telling us a little bit more about that? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, you know, in, again, in the past, there has been really two different security solutions for broadcast TV and streaming. It has been a conditional access focus for broadcast TV, and it has been DRM for streaming platforms. But again, if you look at the consumer, they don't care how they receive the content. And then from the studio point of view, the requirements for protecting the content should be the same. So the trend is how, why don't we use the same uh, security mechanism, right? That is implemented on target device like a smart TV to protect both type of broadcast TV and streaming platform. So Marlin has been, used for IPTV platform and has been used for uh, streaming platforms uh, for many, many years. What we have done is we actually adjusted it to be used for pure broadcast in terms of maybe satellite delivery, cable delivery, and uh, terrestrial delivery. And again, this is because the smart TV chipsets today supports trusted execution environment, they supports a secure video pad, they supports a uh, harder root of trust. These are the factors that are all needed in order to do a broadcast TV security. So again, our goal is to help the industry by unifying the kind of the security platform used for broadcast TV and streaming that would technically help uh, convergence and also transition to more and more streaming down the road. So as uh, a subscriber buys a TV and comes home, can watch broadcast content without adding additional setup boxes or cam modules, and at the same time, they can watch their streaming platform uh, the same way they do today. And down the road, if they wanna use more streaming, they can use that if they wanna use a broad, and that actually enables the operators to uh, be more competitive, right? The pay TV operators with their operator app can keep uh, subscribers and can uh, uh, reduce their subscriber churns by using the, uh, the, the, the direct to TV uh, delivery of their broadcast content. 
Wow, you all have been busy over there, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank well, you. Uh, yeah, and not only are you keeping up with all the current trends uh, and new markets, but you're also driving some of those new markets with, with your innovations. So it's been great to hear about those today. Thanks so much for joining us. Maybe you could wrap up by reminding our viewers what the, uh, uh, what the URL is for InterTrust Express Play. Yes, expressplay.com. So again, uh, feel free to ch check the website. Uh, and uh, again, if you have any questions, any concerns, reach, reach out to us. and uh, more than happy to uh, talk to you. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Ali. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate it.